Hi guys. Today I'm gonna explain Spider-Man No Way Home movie. Spoilers incoming. The movie begins directly where the last movie ended when Mysterio revealed that Peter Parker's Spider-Man. MJ is being hounded by the press after the revelation and everyone is asking her if she's Spider-Man's girlfriend. Spider-Man goes to rescue her and the press turns to him asking him if he really killed Mysterio. He takes MJ and they run as people try to grab at them. The pair goes swinging across New York trying to dodge the media and people. They end up in Spider-Man's apartment where Aunt May's having a conversation with Happy. Happy tells him that he and Aunt May have broken up. It seems they're not aware the Spider-Man's cover's blown. Spider-Man tries to talk to the other two about their relationship but they finally take notice of the news on the television with helicopters hovering outside their apartment building. Department of Damage Control barges in with a warrant to arrest Spider-Man. Aunt May tries to stop them by citing the Fourth Amendment but the federal agents still walk in. They interview Spider-Man about the death of Mysterio but Spider-Man tells them he's innocent as the drones were the ones who killed him. He assures them that Nick Fury can vouch for him but they reveal that Nick Fury has been off-planet for the last year which is news to him. Federal agents also opened an investigation against Stark Industries due to missing technologies. Matt Murdock gets the charges against Spider-Man dropped. However, he advises Happy to lawyer up as he's under investigation as well. He also tells Spider-Man that even though the charges are dropped, they're still the court of public opinions. Almost instantly a brick is thrown through the window which Matt successfully catches before it can hit Spider-Man's face. Aunt May and Spider-Man move in with Happy since they're being harassed non-stop at their apartment. While cleaning his suit, Spider-Man finds one of the missing Stark Industries boxes which is being kept by Happy. The press swarms the school Spider-Man attends since it's his first day as a senior. He's with Ned and MJ as they're surrounded by both supporters and protesters. As he walks through the hall, everyone has their phones out and cameras pointed at him, recording his every move. College admission letters start pouring in but he gets rejected on each of them. The last one comes in which is MIT and Spider-Man go to MJ with Ned already waiting for them and they open their letters together. The group's rejected in MIT as well in light of the recent controversy. Visiting Sanctum Sanctorum, Spider-Man meets Strange to ask for help with his current predicament. Strange suggests the Rune of Kafkal, a standard spell that won't turn back time but will make people forget that he was Spider-Man. Wong tries to dissuade Strange from using it since the spell travels between known and unknown reality which makes it too dangerous. Strange tells Spider-Man it was nice knowing him and he asks what Strange meant. He points out that Spider-Man requested that everyone forget who he is which includes him. Spider-Man tries to change his request while Strange is casting the spell. It goes out of control but Strange contains it. He scolds Peter for changing the spell multiple times. Strange points out that the problem isn't Mysterio but Spider-Man trying to lead two separate lives. Spider-Man chases after the assistant vice chancellor to try and plead MJ in Ned's case. While talking with her, Spider-Man senses something wrong and asks her to get out of the car. He tells everyone to get out of the bridge and Dr. Octopus emerges. He greets Spider-Man as if he knows him and asks him what he has done with his machine. But Spider-Man has no idea what he's talking about and tries to haggle with him. As they're fighting, Dr. Octopus rips Spider-Man's suit, and the nanotechnology from his spider suit bonds with Dr. Octopus' mechanical arms. He's about to kill Spider-Man but his face is revealed and Dr. Octopus doesn't recognize him as the Spider-Man he knows of. Dr. Octopus' mechanical arms pair with Spider-Man's suit which gives Spider-Man the ability to control them. The assistant vice chancellor calls him a hero after saving her life and she promises to talk to admissions about MJ, Ned, and him. After neutralizing Dr. Octopus, Green Goblin shows up and is about to attack Spider-Man but Strange teleport him back to a destroyed Sanctum Sanctorum with Lizard behind a cage as well as Dr. Octopus now. Strange reveals that the botched spell did the opposite instead of everyone forgetting Spider-Man, it started to pull in everyone who knows of Spider-Man from every universe and every reality. Strange tasks Spider-Man to capture everyone who doesn't belong while he figures out how to send them back to their respective realities. Calling for backup. Spider-Man has Strange bring Ned and MJ to the Sanctum Sanctorum to help him with his search. The group goes to the Undercroft. MJ and Spider-Man discuss what happened with MJ suggesting that he has to run his plans with them first before he does something so they can brainstorm. Ned finds the Green Goblin close to a military research facility. Dr. Octopus tells them who it is. Before leaving, Dr. Octopus tells him it can't be him because the Green Goblin he knows has been dead in his reality for years now. Arriving at the military research facility, Spider-Man runs into Electro instead. He tries to web him but it only goes through Electro. As Electro's attacking him, Sandman appears to help him out, asking him if he remembers him. He tells him that he's Spider-Man but he's not his Spider-Man which confuses Sandman. 
Spider-Man promises to explain everything but asks for help to stop Electro first. Electro returns to his original form and Spider-Man reveals to them the truth about what's going on. While fixing the damage he had helped create while fighting Electro, Aunt May calls him to tell him that one of the guys he was looking for had walked in at her work. Spider-Man immediately heads for the diner in a panic and searches for his aunt. He finds her having coffee and talking calmly with the same form of Green Goblin. He had headed for the diner because he didn't know where else to go and needed help. Aunt May tells him that he's lost not just literally but also mentally. She suggests that they all need help but Spider-Man argues that it's not his problem. He tells her that it'll be better for them to get sent back where they came from and she asks him if it's better for them or for him. The Green Goblin goes to the Sanctum Sanctorum willingly and meets MJ and Ned. He finds the others starting with Dr. Octopus. Both are confused with each other's existence. Sandman interjects and tells Spider-Man that both Dr. Octopus and the Green Goblin should be dead since they died fighting the Spider-Man in their universe. As they remember their last memory, they realize that they all woke up to the alternate universe right before they died. Spider-Man tries to plead their case to Strange but he interrupts him to tell him that their sacrifice means infinitely more than their lives. Strange goes to unlock the botched spell from the Makinati Kodamas to finish the ritual properly. Spider-Man grabs the Makinati Kodamas and runs. Strange chases after him. They fight in the mirror dimension with Spider-Man trying to convince Strange not to bring the guys back to their fate. But Strange warns him that if they don't, they'll bring everyone to their universe including the Spider-Mons and the different realities. He brings everyone to Happy's apartment with the help of Aunt May. Spider-Man activates the Stark Industries box earlier that Happy was keeping. It turns out to be the fabricator which can analyze, design, and construct basically anything. He studies Dr. Octopus' setup and finds that the chip he has is fried. Instead of the man being in control of his mechanical arms, it's the arms controlling him. Spider-Man fixes Dr. Octopus by changing the destroyed chip. With him back to his original state, Spider-Man takes the nanotechnology back and lets Dr. Octopus take control of himself again. As he's working, Spider-Man senses something wrong and realizes that the Green Goblin has something up his sleeves. His other side has taken over again. Aunt May runs as Electro removes the gadget that's on his chest that'll fix him. He destroys the fabricator and takes its energy source while the Green Goblin goes to attack Spider-Man. Aunt May attempts to help Spider-Man by injecting the green liquid he was formulating for the Green Goblin but it doesn't work and the Green Goblin attacks her before making his escape. They're about to leave when Aunt May collapses and dies. As they're waiting for word from Spider-Man, Ned discovers that he can create portals using Strange's sling ring which they use to locate Spider-Man. Except they find two different Spider-Mons. The group goes to the top of their high school building where they find the Spider-Man they're looking for. MJ and Ned go to comfort Spider-Man before they introduce the two other Spider-Mons. He didn't want to listen to the other Spider-Mons but to let him know that they understand where he's coming from Peter 2 tells him about losing Uncle Ben while Peter 3 talks about losing Gwen. Peter 3 admits that he became rageful and bitter. He cautions Spider-Man not to end up like him. Peter 2 tells Spider-Man that he found and was able to end the man who killed his Uncle Ben but it didn't make things better. Spider-Man confesses that he wants to kill the Green Goblin. The Spider-Mons work to create cures for the villains. Peter 3 working on the lizard's cure while Peter 2 works on Green Goblin's anti-serum. Spider-Man hesitates but Peter 2 tells him that they have to cure all of them and he finally agrees. When they finish, the Spider-Mons, MJ, and Ned plan to lure the villains to a specific location. Spider-Man goes to call the Daily Bugle, apologizes to everyone watching, and accepts that the villains wreaking havoc in Manhattan was all his fault. He reveals that he's on the Statue of Liberty. Electro arrives first with Peter 3 handling him. Lizard arrives next to go for Peter 2. As Spider-Man goes to get the cure for the first two, Sandman arrives and grabs him. The other villains start fighting with each other since Electro doesn't want to go back while Sandman wants to. The Spider-Mons argue with Peter 2 and Peter 3 not knowing how to work in a team. Spider-Man tells them to trust their tingle and coordinate their attacks. Peter 2 agrees and suggests that they pick them off one by one. The Spider-Mons try again. They go for Sandman and Peter 2 successfully cures him. Peter 3 asks how they'll stop Electro and Spider-Man tells him that they need to take the arc reactor away from him. As they're fighting, Dr. Octopus arrives out of nowhere and goes for the other two Spider-Mons. This distracts Electro momentarily which gives Dr. Octopus a chance to grab at him with one of his mechanical arms. He takes the arc reactor from Electro and forces him to finish the device that Spider-Man gave him earlier. Lastly, the lizard attacks Spider-Man, Ned, and MJ. As he goes to bite Spider-Man, MJ throws a canister at Spider-Man which the lizard accidentally bites instead of him. He quickly returns to his human form. 
Strange finally arrives and takes the Makinati Kodamas but before he can push the button, Ned points out that Spider-Man's plan's working. Strange sees the cured villains. As Spider-Man explains the whole other Spider-Mons and cures the villains, Green Goblin shows up. He grabs the Makinati Kodamas from Strange which Strange successfully gets back but with a grenade strapped to it now. As it explodes, MJ falls back with Spider-Man jumping after her. But the Green Goblin grabs at him and Peter 3 jumps to save her instead, doing what he couldn't for Gwen. The barrier separating the universes is ruptured and Strange goes to try and maintain them. Spider-Man goes to fight with the Green Goblin and is close to beating him to death. Peter 2 stops him before he can. The Green Goblin stabs Peter 2 instead. Peter 3 throws the serum for the Green Goblin and Spider-Man injects him with it. Norman Osborn returns without any memory of his actions as Green Goblin. Spider-Man goes to discuss with Strange what they can do. He says it's too late to fix the botched spell and everyone's on their way for him. He tells Strange to cast the original spell that'll make everyone forget who he is. Strange refuses at first but Spider-Man knows it'll work. Strange reiterates that everyone including him will forget who he is. It'll be like he never existed. Spider-Man asks him to do it anyway. Strange gives him a chance to say goodbye to everyone. He says his goodbyes to the other Spider-Mons first and then goes to Ned and MJ and tells them what will happen. He promises to find them, explain everything and make them remember him. Weeks after the spell and the battle at the Statue of Liberty, Spider-Man drops by the diner where MJ works at to introduce himself to Ned and MJ, but instead of telling them who he is, he orders a coffee instead. The movie ends with Spider-Man at Aunt May's grave. He runs into Happy who inspires him to continue his work as Spider-Man. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video please hit the like button and also subscribe my channel for more videos like this. See you in the next video.